On Blast. This is Fall on Blast, part of the On Blast Podcast Network. Available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. If you like it, then subscribe and tell your friends. Holla. On Blast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind for tuning in once again to a little thing we like to call the Ball on Blast Podcast. As always, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and I'm joined with my guy, Andrew Webster. Webby, what is good? Not too much, man. We've got a little palace intrigue in the NBA. Lots going on. It's a Wednesday, so it's just like a poopery of games going on right now. No, like, uh, <laughs> no Sixers, no Raptors. So I think I'm going to throw on Grizzlies T Wolves for the second half here. Have that playing while we talk. Ooh, that's that's kind of rough. I but know, I know. I understand. We're we're doing this normally. We normally record on Thursday night, but Raps fans know that Thursday night there's a big time matchup Ooh. between the Bucks and Raps going down. And it's so like that means we'll be doing. We'll be doing a little wrap it up following that game. So we move the Ball on Blast podcast to record on Wednesday night, which you'll be hearing Thursday morning, right? Does that make sense? Yo, that, yeah. And that game on Thursday, that's for first place in the East. Essentially, right? The Raps need to win that game so that basically the season series would then be tied at two. Right. And then the first tiebreaker would be record versus the Eastern Conference, which right now the Bucks are ahead but I want to say a couple games, but the Raptors have games in hand. Okay. So so after after it's head-to-head matchup, then it's record against your own conference. Yes. Oh, there yeah. you go. So big-time matchup there, but really, you know, Ball on Blast podcast, we like to talk about what's going on around the NBA. Oh, first off, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, first whoa, off, before whoa. I get too far down – you know, before I get too far away of things that have been going on in the ball on blast world, I got to give a shout out to some people first off, because uh, last night being Tuesday night, I had the pleasure of joining the guys over at the Confederacy of Dunks. I went on their podcast and we had a very good conversation. Shout out to the guys there. Very cool. Um, yeah, shout out to the guys there, uh, Freddie. It was an awesome time, actually. Like, it was really cool. And it was funny because, like, you tweet back and forth with people. You know, you have conversations with them in terms of Raptors. You know, Raptors love. We the North movement is there for real. Yeah. But uh, Freddie sent out the message a while ago, and I've been trying to find a date to make it all work. And then it ended up working. So I went on their podcast. You can listen to that now. Again, it's called the Confederacy of Dunks. I was on with a guy named Steve as well. So it was me, Steve, and Freddie. Really good time, a lot of fun, uh, had a really good time. And again, spreading the word of basketball in Canada, like that's just awesome to me, right? Like that was a... Check that out. I will check that out. And you know what? I'll support some, you know, like startup NBA podcasts. I like this. So we'll give these uh, Confederacy of Dunks podcasts a little listen to. Exactly, right? So it's it's done by... A guy named Freddie, and Freddie's good people. Good dude. He's a comedian. Does a little bit of acting here and there. So it was a fun guy, and it's produced by a guy named Matt. And Matt does like it was really cool to see because you know people that follow us here, at Ball on Blast. Like I'm doing a makeshift like one man operation, you know, trying to like do everything at once and failing most of the time. But Matt had like this this whole setup with like sound effects and. It was really, really fun. So definitely check that out. Wherever you get your podcasts, all the normal places, you know. Um, Confederacy of Dunks. Check that out for sure. I don't know why really I haven't heard episode. of this. I'm going through their guests, and I'm seeing people that I that I know personally. <laughs> Which is amazing. That's fantastic. Right? All right. We'll give it some small world shit. I, and eh? listen, I, I'm sure shit. my invite is in the mail from the Confederacy of Dunks. So I'll just patiently wait by my mailbox. Wait for them to throw the invite my way. That'd be great. I'll put in a good word for you, Webby. I'll put in a good word for well, you. Well, i got to start How's listening that? to their pod. I mean, that would be the number one thing to do, I would imagine. Hey, worlds colliding. Basketball pods colliding. We like it. But in terms of the Ball on Blast podcast, we like to scour what's going on in the entire NBA. But really, there's just one Ooh. topic and one topic only that's dominated this week. And to be honest... When I woke up on Monday and saw that Woj bomb planted by Rich Paul and company, immediately I was like, I can't wait for Ball on Blast because this is so juicy to be wet. You couldn't have. So first we'll start here. AD and Rich Paul 
Rich, Rich Paul being Anthony Davis's agent, they announced through Woj on Monday that Anthony Davis has let the Pelicans know that he will not re-sign a long-term deal, which he is up for in 2020. That's the first. That was a Woj bomb on Monday. Webby, when you saw that, what was your initial reaction? I was unsurprised. <laughs> yes. I feel that this, this was something that was coming for a long time. It was like almost not even a secret around the NBA. If you read anything about what's going on with free agency and where people are moving, if you've paid attention mm-hmm. to anything going on in the NBA with LeBron James and clutch sports uh, in the last year, year and a half, this was something that like was kind of known. But the fact that it was Woj bombed, Meant like meant a lot. Meant that it was actually you know this is happening, right? Like this is no yeah. longer something that is uh, uh, a, a hypothetical. And you know if when this that no 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 this is he wants out of there. And the fact that this is being leaked means that it's something that's very serious. And what's happened today, even tonight with the Pelicans, it, it, this is something I think that's a little closer than anybody realizes. Well, here's the thing, right? Because as you mentioned, when Woj tweets it out, then you know it's real, right? Like he's putting the stamp on it. Like that makes it legit instead of, and and, hey, it's something we love on this podcast, the rumors, you know what I mean? The rumors, the guesses, the trying to be internet, you know, detectives (laughs) and all that. We live off that. So there is a lot of talk, as you mentioned, going around for the longest time. And it started when, it was announced that Anthony Davis switched agents to Rich Paul, Rich Paul obviously being LeBron James's agent and the owner of Clutch Sports. And that's been, it's been talked about before, just kind of maybe the conflict of interest, for lack of a better term. Is there something fishy going on there because of LeBron's close ties to Rich Paul? And, you know, there was obviously talk of tampering when LeBron went out to dinner with Anthony Davis about, a, what was that, a month ago right. maybe, a couple weeks ago? And it's something that, that, so, that Clutch Sports has a history of doing. I mean, you join Rich Paul and Clutch Sports, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be playing with LeBron James. Yeah. And, you know, just some other clients, notable clients would be John Wall, uh, Ben Simmons, obviously. But more recently, just in terms of the Clutch Sports angle involving LeBron, you're talking about Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith. And if you remember back to those issues with the Cavs, those guys ended up signing for big time deals. And a lot of people thought it was because obviously being a Rich Paul client, you're not only making the agency happy, but you you have to make LeBron happy, right? So we've seen this kind of pop up before. There's obviously talk with uh, Caldwell Pope, who's also a Rich Paul client. And the fact that people thought he got a deal that was maybe a lot more money than people it would have anticipated to go to the Lakers a year before LeBron's free agency, right? So there's always been a lot of innuendo surrounding it. But now if we're honest, right, Webby, like, let's be serious. Anthony Davis announces that he switches agents. Anthony Davis and LeBron have dinner. That was something to me that was kind of like, okay, these guys can have dinner anywhere they want and nobody would know about it. They could do it in the hotel room. They could do it at LeBron's right. house. But he decided to do it publicly right after the game. That, to me, was a thing where it's like, okay, what is going on here? I'm going to ask you, Webby. Do you think this is tampering? Are you cool with this? Uh, I think it's yes to both. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. I think okay. this is tampering, but I am cool with it. And, and I don't think that this is any more tampering than when the Heat got together, right? Because that was something that was discussed by those three guys. They got together and said, hey, let's organize this so we can all join the same team at the same time. At least that's what it felt like, right? And Yeah, that's been rumored for a while, right? Like it was during during the Olympics. uh, Olympics. Yeah, exactly. But I don't mind it. I think that in this day and age that we're watching basketball in, players have the power. And it's something that everybody wants. Like I think players having the power is win-win for the fans and the players, right? And so with that, having them be able to make these decisions and these guys are friends and if LeBron wants to play with Anthony Davis, I don't think he should be punished in making a sales pitch to him. 
Yeah, I mean, when we really break it down, the entire world is built off of a power structure. And those that have the power will manipulate any situation to benefit them any way they can. Right. Like that's just the nature of life and society and any now, business. Does anybody in the, the NBA thing that I, have more power than LeBron James? Well, that's what exactly what I was just going to say. Right. I mean, we're so used to the, the power being on the the team side or the organization the side. side or the league side, the owner side. Exactly. Right. Or from a fan perspective, fans might look at it and say, especially Raptor fans. Right. Because there's a lot of distaste for LeBron and the way that he's been making his teams or building up his teams, you know what I mean? And building these super teams. So if you're not a fan of LeBron's teams, you're not a fan of what he's been doing. I'm so intrigued by what LeBron has done just because I enjoy someone realizing their power and then using that to their benefit because that's what everybody does in life. Well, no? and especially in the NBA, I mean like the only other real player who had this amount of power an influence in the league was Jordan and Jordan wasn't using it to build a, not even a brand, but I mean like he wasn't looking to build upon it like LeBron does. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying yeah. there? Like he was way more mm -hmm. focused on winning and putting all of his yeah. power into just beating the guy in front of him. Whereas LeBron is really playing that game, really flexing those uh, behind the scenes muscles, if you will. Also, to LeBron, it's like what's there's a saying about like anytime you're the first, you're gonna get torn down for what you're doing, right. right? But I feel like when we look back in the way that LeBron changed the game, there's so much comparison to Michael Jordan in terms of well, Michael Jordan never did this, which is cool. But I bet if he could have, if they figured out a way to get it done, if like the business of basketball was what it is now. Do you well, know what see, I mean? Like, you can't look at LeBron and look at this as no, a negative no, no. to me. In but my... I disagree with you. I think that even if Jordan okay. was around in this day and age, he still wouldn't be almost as business or behind-the-scenes savvy as LeBron saying. is. Like, LeBron is not only have that competitiveness and the great athleticism and is literally, like, the best, if not one or two, all-time to play the game, but he's also got that other business acumen side to him. Whereas Jordan, I think it was only about beating the guy in front of him. He he could have played now, yeah. and it, it, you know, sure he'd want to get paid. And even when when he did play, he did all he could to get the most amount of cash he could. He was rewarded very well for his high level that he was playing at. But I think for Jordan, it was more about winning. I also think too, you know, one thing that we we don't really look at it this way, but. LeBron watched what Michael Jordan did with his career in post career and kind of doubled down on that and figured out a way to improve yeah. that. Right. And, to enjoy, and I think that's going to show to the enjoy way. it even while he's playing, like why wait until you're done? Exactly. Exactly. Right. And so to see him be able to power broker this whole thing, you know, essentially from behind the scenes, I mean, let's be serious for a second. LeBron's been off for a month, right? He hasn't played since Christmas day. Right now, as we're taping this, it's January 30th. So it's been over a month since LeBron James has played a game. And you'll be hard-pressed to convince me that he hasn't been doing... Like, he could have probably played last week or the week before. But I feel like this is all a power yeah. play in terms of, you know, show have the kids audition a little, right? Let Brandon Ingram show he can get buckets, he can get busy. You know, sort of force the hand of the Lakers in the sense that they're not in the playoffs, right. right? Like they're dropping down the standings with each passing day. I think the record's like six and eleven or something like that without yeah. LeBron. I feel like this is all calculated by LeBron James. And so to have this move set up with Anthony Davis, and it's kind of like they do this to force the hand of the Pelicans, which leads me to two things. One, we gotta mention that Anthony Davis was fined fifty thousand dollars by <laughs> For the NBA self tampering because well, I didn't realize this, but it's in the CBA that you're not allowed to publicly demand a trade. Right. Right? So that's what Rich Paul did, essentially, by saying that like they publicly demanded a trade, which if you think back, Paul George never did that. Kawhi Leonard never did that. It was all insinuated through right. the media. Whereas in this instance, Rich Paul like put out a statement through, wo through Woj, you know what I mean, saying, hey, I'm not going to re-sign, and I want to give the team an opportunity to... You know, 
figure now, this out, but if you're Anthony what's, Davis, what's 50 is, grand to a motherfucker like me? Could you please right. remind me, right? Like, that's exactly what I was going to say. Isn't that a good investment by Rich Paul? It's a great investment, right? Like, you know? how are you going to pay for that, Rich Paul? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you how. When my, when Magic Johnson backs up the Brinks truck. I was going to say straight cash, homie. Straight right? cash, homie. <laughs> Right? But like that, so, that's 50 grand that's not going to be worried about, you know? Exactly, right? So it's so super interesting. I want to ask you, Webby, what do you think the Pelicans should do right now? Hmm, what should they do? They should. Because you mentioned, you mentioned the level of petty we saw tonight. The Pelicans played tonight, and someone noticed that they removed Anthony Davis from all of their. Yeah. Like we all need of their to, pregame intro I, video. Hold on, first, wouldn't you love to be the PA or whatever working for the uh, working for the Pelicans? And the boss calls up and is like, "Okay, we've got to recut this intro video." But here's what I need: I need all of the Anthony Davis gone, and I need you to fill it with Solomon Hill. It's or like Jalil Okafor's <laughs> last four games. It's like <laughs> shit. We need that clean. We need that clean Solomon Hill live <laughs> reap in there. Like, where are we going to find this? Um, what should they do? They should trade Anthony Davis to the and Drew Holiday to the Philadelphia 76ers for Jim, <laughs> Jimmy Butler, Wilson Chandler, uh, the Chicago 2020 first round pick, and the Sixers first round pick next year and in 2020. That's what they should do. <laughs> No, no. Are you kidding me? They should they should be trying to get as much back as they can. Uh, real assets that can play mm-hmm. basketball right now. Because if they don't, basketball in New Orleans could be... In trouble. Really. Oh, for sure. They could be moving to Seattle. Like, we know Seattle's in play to try and get an NBA team. Uh, this is a team that's owned by the guys who own the football team, right? The Bensons yeah. own yeah, the it's Pelicans. the same family that owns the, the Saints. And yeah. even with one of the top three players in the league, that stadium was empty. So if you don't get yeah. enough back to be competitive almost immediately, like if you wait too long and you don't get back a significant enough return for Anthony Davis, uh, you could be in big trouble. So I would honestly like that Lakers platter of Lonzo – Ingram, couple picks, maybe Kuzma too. Like try or Zubat or Zubat. Uh, try and get whatever you can. Almost as good as my guy on the Nets, Koo Roots. Um, yes, uh, you got to try <laughs> and get your man. Sure. Yeah, hundred percent. You got to uh, you got to try and get back everything you can for him immediately. Otherwise, you could be it could be a really uh, short time for basketball in New Orleans. So the two things making major head waves was obviously what you just mentioned with the Lakers, but the other interesting subplot to all this is the Boston Celtics. The Celtics have been long linked to yeah. Anthony Davis, but the problem is they have Kyrie Irving already. And under a weird twist the in the Rose CBA, rule. the Derrick Rose rule, yeah, you're only allowed to have one guy under the bird rights contract, right? Or like the uh, designated player contract. Yeah. You're only allowed to have one of those guys on your team at a time. So the only way that they can get Anthony Davis right now would be if they traded him for Kyrie Irving. So the Celtics, who want Anthony Davis, but they really won't be able to get into the bidding until this summer. So with those two things being, for the most part, the most talked about options, what would you do, Webby? Would you make the trade now with the Lakers, or would you wait for the Celtics package come this summer, which could have, you know, a bunch of draft picks the Celtics own, plus also Jason Tatum. Like, is he, is that the more intriguing package? Uh, what was uh, – we're going to get to this before uh, – or uh, before. We're going to get to this later. Yep. But I was watching The Sopranos last night. And okay. what were they – what was he saying? So Tony said – uh, I was talking to Carmella, and I think it was Carmella that said, uh, there's more damage being done by indecision than bad decisions. Ooh, I like All that. All right, little Sopranos okay. there. I'm sure it's not from Sopranos. I'm sure somebody way smarter than <laughs> Carmella or Tony said that, you know, uh, and actually wrote it down somewhere. But okay, waiting on what Boston might give you at the end of the year, I don't know about that. 
Yo, I totally agree with you, Webby, but I feel like we're in the minority in this, right? Like people keep saying, I feel like the most talked about thing that I'm hearing is people saying, well, what's the rush now? Wait out, wait out the season. Then you have all the offers. The Listen. Celtics offer, obviously, they, you're adding more people into it. Maybe that makes the Lakers give up a little more. I completely disagree. And the first reason why is I don't trust Danny Ainge. Hell no. <laughs> right? But, no, the, the other thing is here, too, it's like uh, they've already taken him off the video on the Jumbotron before exactly. the game. What exactly. do you think they're going to do? Just put him back in there? He hasn't, <laughs> pl- he hasn't played for the Pelicans in like a week and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Like and there's no – like this is a this is a toothpaste that's not going to go back in the tube. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think that this is going to happen a lot sooner than people think. This is like – to me, it's already happened. For sure. Do you know what my thing is too? My thing is that the Celtics picks – remember the Celtics have had all these picks for all these years. Right. But as brought up before – those picks aren't as valuable as they once were. That Kings pick is now like in the – if they make the playoffs, it's not even a lottery pick, right? Well, the Kings pick is top one protected. So, I mean, the Kings are – they're probably going to make the playoffs. So yeah. how valuable is that pick? The Memphis pick, it's only if it falls outside the top eight. Well, Memphis is going to be one of the bottom eight I'm, teams in the league. So that's I'm not watching even the Memphis. Table. I'm watching Memphis right now. They're going to be in the bottom eight. <laughs> Right. The Clippers pick is if it falls outside the top 14, which, okay, cool. Like, what is that? Who cares about the 16th pick in the draft? Right. And then the Celtics own pick, which is probably somewhere in the 20s. Right. So to me, if you're waiting on Danny Ainge that maybe he'll put Tatum in or off rumor that he'll put Tatum in, I'm not trusting Danny Ainge. Right. Like, what's making me trust Danny Ainge? Nothing. As you said, and as Carmela said, right? (laughs) I'm doing what, like, the Lakers are offering you this right now. I'm making that deal. Because you don't know what's going to be there. And I feel like the reason to turn down the Lakers pick is personal, petty reasons. Do you know what what I mean? Like, you just don't want to give him his way because you feel bullied. Right. But here's the thing. They might not have to, like... It's tough. They might not have to trade with the Lakers if they don't want to, right? It's well, just really that Boston thing that that gums it up. But there's well, a lot it, of other on, teams in, out in there. The media news story trying to shift the narrative. Um, Anthony Davis's camp or Rich Paul has come out and they've said that uh, they've made it known to teams and to the Pelicans that he will not sign with any other team other than the Lakers for 2020. So if another team is trading for him they know that it's only for the rest of this year and next season because he's going to sign with the Lakers. So hold on now. We heard that about Paul George. We heard that about Kawhi. We heard that about Kawhi. <laughs> the thing is, is that I think teams are – I. you're telling me that Philly wouldn't take a chance? Hey, you know me. I'm, I'm for taking the chance. I'm for taking that chance. I was for taking the chance with Masai for the one year, right? So, like – with Masai. With Masai Kawhi. getting a Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Masai, Kawhi, see what happened there? Yeah. yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, I was totally down with Masai taking the chance on Kawhi Leonard for one year because you don't know what can happen. So definitely, I have the same mentality with Anthony Davis. I like the power play of what they're trying to do, but the reason I bring up the not being petty, and maybe petty's the wrong term, and that's me, like, putting my, like, putting it through my goggles of how I'm reading it. But if you go back and pay attention to what recently has happened in the NBA, you just brought up Paul George, right? Uh, Kevin Pritchard, who's a GM in Indiana, when Paul George made his his feelings known that he wanted to go play in L.A., they blatantly said they didn't want to trade him to the Lakers. And they also, well, because the Lakers weren't going to give the best offer. So they didn't want to trade him to the Lakers for less. And also the next thing on the table was the Cavs. Well, they didn't want to trade him to the Cavs because the Cavs was one of their rivals. So they ended up sending him to OKC. Do you know what I mean? So and then, not only that, look at the return that they got for him. It was a pretty good return, but it just wasn't letting him win, for lack of a better term. Right. right? Or giving him what he wants. And then look at the Pop situation. Right? Pop did the same thing with Kawhi. He wasn't going to... L- take the Lakers, well, I don't think he was going to take anything with the Lakers because Pop doesn't fuck with the Lakers at all, right? But he's like, oh, you want to go to L.A.? How about Toronto instead? 
Do you know what I mean? And I just kind of think that at, the story came out today as well that Stephen A. Smith. Did you see this story? Stephen no. A. Smith said on first take that. Uh, let me read the exact quote. On Tuesday's episode of First Take, Stephen A. Smith reported Popovich told general manager Dell Demps, quote, don't cave to the Lakers in trade talks for Davis. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Right? So just all I'm saying is if you, you have to, like, try to not make it personal if you're the Pelicans and you have to do what's best for your organization. And if getting – if you're able to squeeze every last prospect out of the Lakers and you're able to get, hey, Lonzo, uh, Kuzma, and Ingram for Anthony Davis, who's going to leave anyways, and whatever the Lakers pick is that you can flip with your pick to get a higher pick or whatever, you do that. Absolutely. That's my take. That's my yeah. take. You do that now. You don't wait. Anything could happen. Anthony Davis could get hurt. Kuzma or Ingram could get hurt. Jason Tatum could get hurt. Like, there's so much on the table that could happen. We all thought Boogie Cousins was walking into a max deal, blows his Achilles, right? Like, so much can happen. I'm with you, Webby. Take the Lakers deal now and just be done with this era of Anthony Davis and this negative talk about your franchise because all that's going to happen is Rich Paul is just going to smear your, your organization even more. Not only that, and it's just like every day this trade doesn't happen, I feel that his trade value goes down yeah i mean it, you're not helping yourself if you're the pelicans i don't think so at all because there's so many things that i didn't even know about the pelicans organization that i know now like i had no idea that uh people were talking about and this was put out there which i find interesting by rachel nichols which i i bring that up only to say a lot of people within nba circles you heard this from kevin durant talk about lebron has his people in the media that shift certain narratives right yeah Rachel Nichols was talking about the fact that you talk about teams' front offices and their organizations and the way that they take care of players. Did you know that the Pelicans share a medical staff with the Saints? Like, they don't have their own medical yeah. staff. They share one with the Saints. Like, that's horrible. That's terrible, right? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It's not a first-class basketball organization. There's... When you look at other teams and what they have, and you got to share yours with freaking Alvin Kamara. <laughs> There's something else about the naming rights, too, on the stadium with the Smoothie King Center. I forget. It sounds stupid? Well, no, there's something else <laughs> about it. Uh, I, read a, I read an article about, about that situation yeah. a while ago. I forget what it is, but you're right. It's not a real NBA situation, and that's why, the, I mean, not only are they going to lose a once-in-a-generation talent, but they're probably going to lose the team. It's just such a, a messed up situation that I feel like whatever the next era is of your team, you got to get to that now because this is just bad press. The longer you're in the news for this, it's just not good. There's no good outcome. And the other, the other flip side to this, to me anyways, Webby, is there's a team in Toronto that has already said that they're going all in this year by trading away the face of their franchise for Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> who has no guarantees to this to the Toronto Raptors organization beyond this season. So there's talk that the Raptors and Milwaukee Bucks have put together packages inquiring about Anthony Davis. Mr. Andrew Webster, my question to you, if you're Masai Ujiri, who is part of said package for Anthony Davis? Anybody on the team not named Kawhi Leonard? <laughs> I totally it's, it's the same as the Sixers. It's like <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody totally except Simmons and Embiid. Uh, like, and the Bucks should be the same way. Anybody except Giannis. Yeah, it, like you hand over a piece of paper and you say, hey, Dell Demps, whatever you want. Anybody not named Kawhi, good. Let's make a deal. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where, and one thing about Raptor fans and, hey, I do the Wrap It Up podcast. Listen, we, all love, Blast we podcast. all love Pascal Siakam. We all do. But you're a fool if you wouldn't package <laughs> Lowry, Pascal, a anybody for, for anybody. Anthony Davis. You're so right about that. I've heard so many times this week people be like, oh, I don't know if I want to give up Pascal. It's like, <laughs> it's like what are we well, talking about? What is happening right now? You're talking about Anthony Davis, right? Like, you're crazy talking about pills. adding – you're talking about adding potentially two of the top five players in the NBA to your team in the span of half a year. 
<laughs> right? Like, what, what are we talking about right now, right? Pascal Siakam might be okay, but you know what? Anthony Davis is like one year older than Pascal. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. what are we talking about right now? It's so amazing to me, but then I take a step back, and it's something that we talk about all the time, right? Raptors fans watch the Raptors broadcast, right? Which the Raptors broadcast is run by Raptors employees. Yeah meaning that you're getting fed information that boosts up Raptors players. So Raptors fans have a have a tendency to overvalue their own players, right? Uh, so exhibit oh, A no OG. Exhibit A Fred Van Vliet. <laughs> I'm not mad at Freddie, but I know what you're saying. No, no, no. I know what you're saying though. Right? But it's just of course you would give up Pascal Siakam. Of course you would give up OG and Anobi. You do that, but the flip side of that is Okay, let's just say worst case scenario, you make this trade. You give up you give up OG, Pascal, Delon, whatever to get to get Anthony Davis. Worst case scenario, let's say you flame out in the second round. Okay. I don't think that would happen, but I'm just saying worst case scenario, right? Webby, follow me, right? So Kawhi Leonard leaves. You still have Anthony Davis. Guess what? With Anthony Davis signed for one year you can still go to the Boston Celtics and trade him for Jason Tatum or go to the Lakers and trade Anthony Davis for Kuzma, Ingram, whatever. Like, that is still on the table. There's actually no downside to trading for Anthony Davis at all. I, I'm i just passionate about this because I want to help you, Raptors fans. We, <laughs> right? We literally said the same thing with Kawhi Leonard. Exactly. If, right. If this, Take us back to that moment, Webby. It, Take us back to that moment and what some of the talk was about. Oh no, but it's Demar. He's the face of our franchise. He liked us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, he's a he's a guy we drafted. It's like this is the NBA, boys. Like, let's wake up and smell the fucking coffee here, bro. If and, if Kawhi Leonard didn't work out, and Kawhi Leonard has worked out in Toronto extremely well. Like, this is an yes. unbelievable experiment that the Raptors have successfully completed. If it didn't work out, they could have traded him. And they could have yeah. gotten a lot back for him. And if they do, like you say, worst case scenario, Kawhi leaves and you still have Anthony Davis. And if you want to really get down to brass tacks, you can trade Anthony Davis and get quite a lot back for him. Of course. Of yeah, course, You make a right? great and- point with that. I was just amazed at the fact that, you know, people were so hesitant. And it's like, guys, we just watch this to see the levels between Damar and Kawhi. You're talking about the levels of what Pascal Siakam might be, which you don't even know. But the levels between Pascal Siakam and Anthony Davis. <laughs> like, what are we talking about, right? <laughs> like, and, and the, to back up your point, you said Kawhi Leonard has worked out great. Not only is he already the best player the Raptors have ever seen <laughs> wear their uniform, Kawhi Leonard's averaging career highs in points and rebounds. Like, he's having his best season ever. So the fact that people even questioned the DeMar DeRozan thing, it's like, we just watched this happen. So from a Raptors perspective, hey, I'm pretty sure if Masai can make the deal, he would make the yeah. deal. He'd go all in and do that, right? Because you're you're already here. And my biggest point to Raptor fans throughout this whole thing has been how often are the Toronto Raptors going to be in this position where you have a top five player in the league with a supporting cast around you that you can say, hey, we can add another superstar or the supporting cast you currently have right now, you think you're one of the favorites to make the NBA Finals. How often are you going to be able to say that with the Toronto Raptors franchise, right? You're right there. You go for it. Of course you do it. Here's the other thing, though, is that there are four other or three other teams, Mm -hmm. two of which can actually make a trade for Anthony Davis, who are thinking the exact same thing. Like Milwaukee and Philly are thinking the exact same thing as the Raptors are. Why For wouldn't sure. we and if we could? The only thing is, is now they totally should because it screws Boston. And it takes Boston exactly. takes Boston right out of the picture in the Eastern Conference Finals picture if you're Philly or you're Toronto or you're Milwaukee and you can add Davis to the superstar or superstars that you already have. Also, too, with this whole Boston thing, every you could be waiting for Boston's offer – and what if Kyrie says he's not going or he do, he's not staying, sorry. 
if Kyrie says he's not staying, Anthony Davis is telling Boston, well, don't don't trade for me because I'm not re-signing with you if Kyrie's not there. No. Right? Like, there's so many intangibles to is this. Is there any chance that they put Kyrie in a package to get Davis back? I still don't think Anthony Davis, like, I think Anthony Davis is doing exactly what Kyrie did to get to Boston, right? Because if we remember that, remember there were stories that they had a deal done, a three-team a three, a three yeah. team trade for Kyrie done, where Kyrie would have went to Phoenix. the Phoenix, right? But essentially, what did Kyrie's people do? Well, he told people, he told Phoenix, there's no chance that I'm re-signing with you, so don't trade for me. So Anthony Davis, essentially, I would see him doing the same thing, whereas if there's no Kyrie in Boston, he's going to let them know, hey, I'm not re-signing. Don't bother trading for me. Like, you're wasting your time but, trading for me because there's no chance of me But signing. don't they just have a good enough chance without Kyrie and with Anthony Davis than they do with Kyrie and without Anthony Davis? Isn't that kind of apples and oranges? From from the Boston perspective, yes, you are definitely correct. But I feel like the goal would be for you to add Anthony Davis to Kyrie. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, you'd be a better team. You're a better team if you swap out Anthony Davis and Kyrie, for sure. But I just so think then, from the Anthony Davis angle, he's telling you, like, no, I don't want to play there. So then if, if you're those other three Eastern Conference contenders, Toronto, Philly, Milwaukee, you got to do everything in your power to get Anthony Davis this year. I wouldn't yeah, even you roll want the him. dice because you're the Raptors. Yeah, I wouldn't even right. You're the Bucks. Like <laughs> you roll the dice and you take your chance because LeBron James isn't deciding that he's just going to jump to your team next yeah. year, right? Um, the other s- side of this, though, there's been a lot of talk about this Webby. I like your opinion on it. Do you think the NBA has a problem with the stars calling the shots and meaning small market teams aren't able to compete? Do you think that's a problem the NBA has? No. I don't. Because I think with the way that we're consuming the sport now, I don't think small market matters. I totally agree. I don't. I totally agree. I don't think it does. And I, I think it's such a, and look a at false what, narrative. And look at what Denver's doing this year. Now, I know Denver's not necessarily like a tiny market, but of course it's not like New York or L.A. or Chicago, right? And, and yeah. they've put together this team that while it doesn't have a – LeBron James or uh, Steph Curry or whatever, this is like one of the best teams in the Western Conference. And it shows that these oh, yeah. teams, if you have somebody who's creative in putting uh, putting rosters together, you can still have mm-hmm. a lot of success. you got to get lucky in the draft, obviously, but that goes for any team with any player on it. You have to be able to hit on late first round or second round picks. And if you can do that... I- you know, you can create a big team. I don't think that being in New York, L.A., Boston, or Chicago necessarily makes you gives you any kind of advantage over a Minnesota or an Indiana. I think the real advantage now is is Russell Westbrook on your team, is LeBron James on your team, is James Harden on yeah. your team. That's where you get the real power now, not because of where your team is physically located. I totally agree with you, Webby. And you know what? People have been making excuses for the Pelicans and saying small market teams and making this a, such a conversation when, to me, like, if I'm looking at the Pelicans and I'm being honest with them, like, what's wrong with their franchise? It's not their no, market. It's, a lot. it's your front yeah. office isn't good. It's a lot. And and right? your, your team's been run like shit for the last – since you moved to New Orleans, you know? Well, you have Dell Dems, who's been there forever, and it's like you had Chris Paul and Anthony Davis. You fluked into Anthony Davis because, really, you should have had the second pick, but you won the lottery to get Anthony Davis. And now that's two of the best players of their respective generations, right? And you weren't able to put a championship contending team around either of those two guys? That's on you. That's not a market problem. That's on you. Just be better. Yeah. And you mentioned it. Take, take a look at who's at the st- standings. In the Eastern Conference, Milwaukee Bucks, Toronto Raptors, Indiana Pacers. Those are three teams that are not NBA desirable markets, right? By any means. If you go to the West, you got Golden State in first, right? Then you have Denver, Oklahoma City, and Portland. Yeah. So 
it's like it's not about markets it's about being a good organization and i just mentioned portland who i think i don't think the blazers get enough credit for how competitive they've been able to be when they had their own issues right like remember they had lamarcus aldridge lamarcus aldridge leaves it's not like they've missed a beat they've still been a competitive team year in year out in the western conference whereas these so-called big markets who have the knicks got <laughs> right <laughs> who have the knicks got the knicks haven't gotten yeah, anybody david right? Fisdale like, is who the knicks got right but like their market doesn't matter the knicks market doesn't matter the clippers market hasn't really mattered right like it, it's just such a like you know you look at some of these teams dallas and mark cuban who have they been able to get if we're really being serious right it, it's just such a false narrative that i think we make so many excuses or to go back to bring this full circle I'm so it's why I'm so much for what LeBron is doing because it's highlighting the fact that hey the owners mess up it's on them it's on them how they run their organization and so they keep having these lockouts and stuff to try to protect the owners and changing the length of the contracts and what a max contract is and what this is and what that is it's like no just be a good organization draft well and your team will be okay Exactly. Right. Make it a desirable place. Like, the the Oklahoma City thing is what really uh, should should be the shining example of what we're talking about. They, they've sure. got one of the best executives in the game who mm -hmm. was very successful in the draft, got a super... Oh, super successful got a, in the draft. For you yeah, to draft... Yeah. Hold on, Webby. For you to draft Kevin Durant... Russell Westbrook, Serge Ibaka, Harden, uh, Stephen Adams, <clears throat> James didn't Harden. Draft, they, I, like, they didn't draft. Did they draft Adams, or did they? Because that did. was the so, pick. Because Adams that was the pick they got for you. Yeah, that was the pick they got for right. James Harden. So I mean, right. that shows how front office organization can make your small market team a desirable place for free agents to sign. For sure. And even the Raptors. The Raptors are a great example too, right? Because it's not a desirable market yet in the NBA. Masai's been trying to change that, but even if you go back to this, the start of this Raptors run, right? And if you say, hey, this happened by fluke, they're trying to tear it down, they almost traded Kyle Lowry, but Dol Dolan vetoed the trade, cool. The first year, I will give you that as a fluke. But look at what Masai Ujiri has done for every year since then. He's revamped the supporting cast around that team which has arguably been more valuable than demar Derozan and kyle lowry but he's revamped the supporting cast around those guys over and over and over again to make them a top tier team in the nba that's just a good organization right exactly. indiana pacers same thing they're not getting anybody but you go to big markets like washington how they run their organization like crap I would say they've underachieved considering you've had John Wall and Bradley Beal for how long, right? You haven't been able to do anything. Is Atlanta a small market? Right? Like, it's just so weird to me. Just some of the narratives that get drawn up in the NBA and people just run with it. But at the end of the day, if New Orleans did a better job surrounding Anthony Davis, and do you think that the Pelicans' biggest mistake was not re-signing Boogie Cousins? Or as rumors indicate, they didn't even offer Boogie Cousins a deal? when he was someone who it appeared like he and AD got along. Do you think that was maybe their biggest mistake? Oh, I don't know what their biggest mistake was. They've made a lot. But, <laughs> but yeah, I guess, I guess recently that would be a big one for sure. Like, you make this trade to get Boogie Cousins, and I, and I understand that Boogie blew out his Achilles, and I understand that it's a big deal for you to – put a lot of money into a big guy coming off an Achilles injury. I understand all of that. But if you're running an organization and your franchise player has a bond with the second superstar, right? You got to at least offer this guy a deal. I mean, no? especially because it's he he took a severely like discounted deal with with Golden State, with Golden State. right? Yeah. Yeah. But I just think it's like right there was your opportunity to because let's play this out for a second i know this is a hypothetical but let's just say that they sign boogie cousins or not even that they go to anthony davis and they say hey boogie's coming off 
we're hesitant to give him the big time deal but if you're if you're in on this we're all in with having you guys as the cornerstones of our franchise you have that conversation with your franchise guy and i'm sure he's going to give you the blessing so now boogie boogie cousins contract is an investment in anthony davis long term right anthony davis isn't going to come to you a year later or months later after you re-sign boogie cousins after having that conversation with them He's not then going to turn around and be like, hey, guys, I want out. That's not going to happen. No, you're absolutely right. I don't know. It's just a, a mm. weird situation. But how do you think this should end? Like, how, how does Andrew Webster, if you get to decide where he goes, and, and I'm not talking about Andrew Webster, the Philly fan. I was going to say, say, I already said, Sixers. I'm not talking about Andrew Webster, the Philly fan. I'm saying, you know, what do you think if you had to if you were a, a better if you were a gambling man webby and you were laying down the big bucks where do you think anthony davis ends up where is anthony davis playing after the february 7th trade deadline los angeles with the I lakers agree. with the lakers i mean the the odds are out there and the the they're the favorites honestly i hope that one of the 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 teams in the eastern conference that are vying for the Eastern Conference Championship that aren't the Boston Celtics, Mm -hmm. I really hope that one of those teams, whether it's Toronto, Philly, or Milwaukee, make a deal to get them. Because I think that that would be the best. Because I think that that would really screw... I think that would really screw the Celtics. I'll say this much. I really, really deep down inside think that the Raptors have a way better chance of getting Anthony Davis than anyone is giving them credit for. And the reason why is because they can put together a better and more realistic package than any other team that's not the L.A. Lakers, right? Like, the Raptors are going to be more willing and they'd have a better package than whatever you're getting from the Milwaukee Bucks, right? I don't know how willing Philly would realistically be to giving up Jimmy Butler, but also how willing the Pelicans would be to taking Jimmy Butler, Right, like Jimmy Butler doesn't seem to have the best uh, <laughs> the best user rating right now. <laughs> right. If that's the right term to use, you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm just saying, in terms of getting young players and people that can help you, and also having a team that's willing to go all in, that's not going to care about Anthony Davis, not fully committing beyond 2020. That's the Raptors. And so, if you look at it and you're the Pelicans and you say we can be done with this get some pretty solid assets right now while also not giving in to Anthony Davis or the Lakers. I'm just saying the Raptors have a much better chance than I think that people are giving them credit for. And so, Hey, Masai, I believe, man, I believe. You think they can do it. Hey, I put all the chips in the table. Let's go. I think that we're going to, like I say, I think we're going to know sooner rather than later. I really do. Yeah, because there's a lot of things at play. LeBron's been sitting out for a month. They have a massive game tomorrow, I'm pretty sure, against the Clippers, and he's not. He's they've already announced he's not in the lineup for that game. I highly doubt that if you miss that game, why bother coming back against the Warriors on Saturday? Right. That doesn't really make much sense. Then you're talking about the All Star break, so you could be. You're there are three games out right now. I think you could be four games out. You need Anthony and LeBron. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, there's pressure on the Lakers and Magic Johnson to do whatever it takes to make this deal happen. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're, as you mentioned, can you really insert Anthony Davis back into your lineup if you're the Pelicans after you made the move to remove him from your, like, team video? Like, it seems like you're already at a level of petty where you're like, okay, I'm done with this. Right? I don't know interesting though and again it just goes to show the best league in the world webby is what oh it's the nba so good the nba so good oh it's the best it's the best um but yeah i mean we just went through a lot of stuff there lebron seems to be relaxed is there shots now the questions are people are asking was he drinking wine on the bench last night (laughs) which is i missed that so they showed well, him with on the, the work. Bench. Listen, with the work Embiid was giving them last night, he needed a drink. Let me tell you, <laughs> the absolute Fair work. 
fair enough fair enough yeah that lakers team i don't know what's going on man it's such a gong show i i can't believe lebron seriously took a month-long vacation in the middle of the season like that's incredible like if he co-opted this whole thing you know get anthony davis to sign with clutch get anthony davis to sit out games lebron himself sits out games forces engineers this trade mid-season to get anthony davis to the lakers while so that means you're getting lebron rested for the second half and playoffs them could be a seven seed in the west which it doesn't matter what seed they are if it's lebron and anthony davis right <laughs> like it's just incredible the drama in me like removing my raptors you know my raptors corner out of it yeah the drama in me webby wants to see anthony davis head to the lakers just because i feel like it'd be incredible incredible imagine a first round matchup against the golden state I know. warriors that's what i was gonna say do you think that lebron and anthony davis would give the warriors a series yes do you think that oh, they, hell yes do you think that they would win that series i think they give them a really 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 good go I, I i think they give them a really good go now obviously there's a lot of other pieces and a lot of other things there in terms of like okay well what's the rest of the lakers team look like I'm sure they'd get some buyout candidates. I guarantee you J.R. Smith would somehow find his way out <laughs> to the Lakers with Melo, right? Like, there'd be a bunch of, like, those weird-ass moves for sure. But at the end of the day, you're talking about LeBron James with Anthony Davis going all out. Like, whew. Yeah. I, I, I take that. I take that bet. Let's I'm, I'm here let's for just it. Put it that I'm way. here for it 100%. Um, so in our Ask On Blast segment, which is a way that we always end each and every podcast, right? It's normally nothing to do with basketball. And it's more so to do with pop culture. But there's a sporting event that's happening this weekend that seems to transcend pop culture. Oh, of course. Right? <laughs> that's the Super Bowl. I feel like it's only right, Webby, that we should give our Super Bowl picks to end this podcast. This isn't like last year, Shelly. Where, of course not. Where of course we not. had the uh, Philadelphia Eagles on an improbable but uh, a beautiful Super Bowl run uh, that culminated in the Philly special and big dick Nick Foles uh, lifting <laughs> lifting the Lombardi Trophy for the city of Philadelphia for the first time in franchise history for the Philadelphia Eagles. No. Okay. This is the L.A. Rams, who, mm -hmm. good team, uh, good young team on offense at least, uh, a little uh, long in the tooth. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, but it's man, it's tough to go against Brady and the Pats. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the two and a half, and I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna hammer the over fifty six and a half. Uh, I'm with you on the over, Webby. I'm with you on the over. You're and going against touchdown, Tom. Is that what I'm? I haven't made my I won't make my official bet. I guarantee I won't make my official bet until Sunday, and. Uh, it's, Here's the thing. It's Tom, Br I've it's stated, Tom Brady. I've said that, you know, I was going to spend, as soon as the Super Bowl matchup was set, I said I was going to spend the two weeks trying to convince myself or talk myself out of taking the points and the L.A. Rams. And I'm still in that point where I'm, I'm needing to talk myself out of it. I'll tell you how you and talk yourself out of it, okay? Look at the yeah. other side. <laughs> I hate well, Hold on. I hate them. I'll be honest with you, Webby. I know you. obviously you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan. But last year, was I was in the exact same mode. I was like, no, I'm on the Eagles. And mind you, the spread was a lot more. I'm pretty sure it was like Patriots by six yeah. or something last year. Like it was, it was bigger. It was more than a, a field goal for sure. But last year, I had the exact same mentality where I was like, no, no, no. I'm with the Eagles just because I think the Eagles are a better team. So I'm definitely taking the points. When I'm looking at the, these two teams, I think the Rams are better. A lot of it comes down to is Todd Gurley healthy? That's a that's a massive that's thing. A We're never thing. gonna know that until the game happens. But big CJ Anderson I fan though I am. <laughs> Not mad at C. Hey, he won me fantasy football this year. Can't be mad no, at that. CJ Anderson don't. got me the championship, so I can't be mad at that. But I don't know, man. I, something just tells me that the Patriots, like, I had them losing to the Chiefs. I had them losing to the Chargers. And I was wrong twice. I don't know. As of now, I'm still trying to talk myself out of taking the Rams. That's just where I'm at right now. Oh, I mean, uh, like, <laughs> I, I, you just look over at the other side. You see Belichick. You see Brady. 
what they've done uh, since they've had to turn it up. I know they didn't look great at the beginning of the year, but this is uh, this is Tom Brady and Bill Belichick time, man. This is what they get so to. So that's – I'll be honest. The first thing that worries me is obviously you have to be sure when you're betting against Brady and Belichick because you don't want it to be like – you know, you don't want the game to start and then be like, why did I go against Brady and Belichick, yeah. right? First thing, I mentioned Todd Gurley, but some of the other things that worry me is, I mean, you're talking about Goff, who I don't think is that good, nope. <laughs> right? It's a system. But also, I feel like Tlaib <laughs> and Peters are going to be so jacked up that they're going to take some terrible pass interference or or get and inopportune Or moments. get burned. Like, those two guys are... are some of the most talented secondary players in the NFL. But like you say, these are two guys who you get real jacked up for this game and have Bill Belichick take advantage about how fired up they're going to be. And we've seen yeah. Peters give up some really big plays. Uh, now, yeah, to, and Tlaib too. Absolutely. I think Tlaib's been playing really, really well, though, lately. Uh, yeah. If he can stay on the field, though, a guy uh, getting that old, uh, tough to uh, tough to stay healthy for a full game. But... Man, that's one guy in Bill Belichick that you don't want to scheme, that you don't want to have on the other side if you're a Peters or a Tlaib, if you're going to get a little uh, footloose and fancy th- free out there and get fired up and have your emotions take over, you know? Bill Belichick will make <laughs> you pay every time. For, for sure, and it, it's totally true. And, again, as you're listening to this right now, I apologize if you guys are listening to me and jumping on the Rams train because I'm saying so. And I'll be honest, follow me on Sunday. You follow me on social media. I will tweet out what my actual pick is before the game. But as of right now, it's interesting. It's super interesting. It's going to be so much fun. Either way, I think it'll be a great game. The Patriots always seem to play good Super Bowl games anyways, right? So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, Yeah. Any plans? Super Bowl party or anything? Nah, Webby? taking it easy. Just saying, okay. I'm going to work tomorrow. Okay. All right, going to work on, on on Monday. I mean, I'm an old man. I'm washed. Uh, I'm nine to f- <laughs> nine to five Webby here. <laughs> nine to five Webby. Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, nine to five Webby. Where can the people catch you on social media? Obviously, outside of the hours of nine to five. Oh, though, of course. Because right? you hey, don't want to disrupt listen, you at work. <laughs> no distractions at work. Let me tell you. Uh, you can catch me on Instagram and face, or excuse me, Instagram and Twitter. Same screen name at a Webster eighty four. Uh, Confederacy of Dunks. I expect to follow as I'll be following you guys, and I'll just be waiting by the DMs, waiting for that. Hey, Webby, whenever you want to come and uh, have a guest spot on the Confederacy of Dunks, uh, just name your place and time. So that's what I'll be waiting for. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, my name is Sheldon Alexander. You can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander and on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander. And of course, this is the Ball on Blast podcast, part of the On Blast podcast network, which on this feed as well, you can find the Wrap It Up podcast, which is live on Twitter at Shell Alexander, following each and every Raptor. Especially tomorrow. Minus the Raptor game. Well, yes, especially tomorrow is on Thursday, but you will not find it after the game on Sunday because it's a Super Bowl and I'll be at a Super Bowl party somewhere and the Raptor game's at like 3 o'clock or something like that. Weird scheduling there. I gotta say, come on, NBA. Like, let's be serious. Get but, it together. Yeah, get it together. You can't schedule an NBA game that's gonna end an hour before the Super Bowl. Like, that's not, that's not cool, right? That doesn't make sense. Let's figure things out there. But anyways, beyond that, you can find that podcast, Wrap It Up Podcast, on Twitter, at Shell Alexander, after each and every Toronto Raptors game, or on wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, YouTube. Shout out to the people of the YouTube community. Really appreciate you guys. Shout out to you there. Like and subscribe. I, I told Webby, Webby enjoyed the joke last week, so I'll say it again, as Bomani says, Give us five stars, because if you give us four, we're forced to think that yeah, you're a hater. Don't be a hater. Right? Don't be a hater. <laughs> Shouts to Bobani as well. But, hey, again, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up. Nope, this is the Ball on Blast. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that to happen at some I'm point surprised. this year. I'm surprised that this is the first time it's happened. 
it, it, it's the first time it's happened on either podcast, and I'm stunned that it's taken this long. But this is the Ball on Blast podcast, as always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time, where I swear I'll get the outro correct, <laughs> and it'll be done in a more timely fashion. <laughs> but until next time, see ya. Peace. <laughs> this is Ball on Blast, part of the On Blast podcast network. Available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. If you like it, then subscribe and tell your friends. Holla. Boom, blast.